Yes. As I was telling you, local, state, and federal laws regulate many products. It is very true. They regulate local, state, and federal. Federal is nothing but the national. Federal laws regulate regulate the product. How the product should be. What are all the safety measures should be carried? Should be have followed? Should, should have been followed during the manufacture of the products? All those are going to be uh, considered. Are going to be what uh, regulated by these laws. And uh, examples we can give you uh, like uh, municipal municipalities. Otherwise, uh, when we construct a house in our locality, we will have to get the permission from the uh, concerned authority. Uh, we will have to submit the plan of our construction, plans of our construction. How many floors do we construct? And uh, they will come and do an inspection, like uh, uh, whether is it a residential area and how many number of the floors is floors can be allowed. Um, Many such standards they have got, and uh, uh, that is nothing but the what uh, the loss by the local municipalities we have got. So, uh, what uh, manufacturing of the products very similarly in the industries also. So, under this uh, product safety law, we are going to uh, discuss one major and important law. Am I there with you? Connected? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, one of the law we are going to discuss and what is the purpose of that law, we, sh we shall see. And uh, that law name is the Consumer Product Safety Act. Consumer Product Safety Act. That was devised in the year 1972. Okay, and it was passed in the US. And uh, one important thing I forgot to tell you, the origin of this uh, product uh, liability was in US and uh, now also there are several number of cases against the products uh, are been running the liability is from US on the United States and they had one uh, law that was uh, 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 in the year 1972 and the law name is uh, uh, Consumer Product Safety Act. Let me ask you a question. Uh, enumerate the objectives or the purpose of Consumer Product Safety Act. Let me write down that. Consumer Product Safety Act. It was in the year 1972. Let me ask you this also. Okay. And the purpose of this law the purpose of this act or there are main main four purposes the first purpose is to protect the public against the unreasonable unreasonable risk of injury to protect the public against unreasonable Reasonable uh, risks of injury injury associated with uh, consumer products. So it is uh, self understanding associated with consumer product, otherwise, just product. Yes, this is being the first purpose of the Consumer Product Safety Act 1972. Mm -hmm where they are saying that it is a, a, a bound duty to protect the public against what? Against the unreasonable risk. Unreasonable risk are like, uh, uh, which are not acceptable, okay? Unacceptable risks and that act has several uh, procedures and those procedures must be followed by any organization when they manufacture a particular product. Second purpose of this act is to assist consumers following the comparative safety of consumer products. This act always assists, it helps the consumer so that the consumers can compare the 
products with the other companies also like which company is following the standard and that company product can going to be what bought by those consumers so we say that it assists to assist assist consumers in evaluating they can always evaluate they can always measure which company product is good that assistance that help is going to be led uh, like uh, led by this uh, uh, cpsa consumer product safety act okay evaluating the comparative safety safety of the products yes following good uh, here comparative safety being a consumer he has all the rights to know the safety of the various products For example when i am buying a television set i can always compare the safety of the television set i bought from the different companies so which company has got uh, is, uh, has given uh, more safety uh, we, we just i just go and buy that uh, product from that company and that is uh, possible when it is been uh, what uh, notified or it is been uh, given in a enacted in a law such uh, as consumer product safety act law okay i have got like we have got another two uh, purpose of this law with this we are going to conclude this product liability we do not have much here you all have to understand that at the end of this course we are doing like uh, we have got to know how to produce a product how to uh, ensure that uh, how how to enhance the quality of the product and uh, how uh, various tools and techniques can be used to uh, improve both quality as well as the productivity we are at the end now like once the product is been produced and once it is been used by the consumer if the product is uh, creating any uh, classes of injury or any other damages then how a consumer can going to file the lawsuit and how we can always uh, entitled to have the compensations from the organization uh, that topic we are into now at the end of the course okay uh, now i was into the uh, objectives or the purposes of the consumer product safety act the two purposes very clearly i have written it here and i hope you have understood what is the meaning of those right and the other two i'll mention it here stay with me act is to develop uniform safety standards to develop uniform safety standards what do you understand by this this act gives the uh, safety standards that are uniform in nature to all the organizations so that uh, any sector uh, probably the one who produces the boilers the one who produces some of their electronic gadgets uh, they must be following that sector must be following this uniform uh, safety standards otherwise uh, the law is not going to permit them to operate there that is the meaning of uh, uh, like a uniform safety standard development okay so this law always develops uniform safety standard that is the another purpose of this law and the fourth one is being uh, to promote research and investigations it is also very important to promote research and investigations it always promotes the research and investigations how you must understand that 
when an organization do not want to get involved in this product liability, it will always have research going on and investigations going on so that there is no faulty product are going to be handed over to the customer who is going to promote both research and development as well as the investigations into the various aspects of the same product. Okay, uh, these are all the four uh, objectives of the purpose of the uh, Consumer uh, uh, Product Safety Act. Okay, I hope you have understood the reasons behind the injury, what is the law, prevailing law we have got, and what are the purposes of those law we have got to know. Okay, and next we'll move on to the defenses. Very important. It is not always true that everybody will make the genuine claim. Yes, it is true. Many consumers go file the fake lawsuits against the manufacturer or against somebody else. And that our product had never been out of the specification, out of the regulation. We have followed all the safety standard, uh, we have prepared the product in such a way that uh, it, it, it may never cause any uh, what uh, uh, adverse effect or uh, any damage. But the consumer has come up with such a claim and they will always have a what uh, difference, like how the difference should be. And uh, we all know that when certain claims are made by the consumers, uh, organizations will uh, do a set of the trials to determine the exact cause behind the accident or exact cause behind that injury. Somebody may go with a mobile phone, like uh, somebody may go with a, a uh, what a car which has met with an accident, and they always say that the brake has failed or something that has happened. It is the fault of the manufacturer. In that case, what happens, the organization will conduct a lot of trials. They'll do ask, they'll inquire each and every uh, uh, what uh, requirements uh, to know, to realize about what is the cause behind that accident. Okay, so in the defense, I'm talking about the defense. I hope, I hope you are understanding what you mean by defense. Defenses, we can always have the, uh, like, we are entitled, being an organization, we are entitled to have the defense against the claims that are made by anybody for that case. Defense. Who is going, who is going to defend? Manufacturer is going to defend. What he will say? That, no, our product was good. Our product was right. I do not know how the consumer has used it. I do not know what is the level of the understanding he has had about the instruction of the usages. And he can always say that, uh, he, I do not know like uh, uh, under what load he has used because certain uh, products are to be used within some limits. Like example, when we have a car, it, is, it used to uh, like, uh, we, we, we may have to go some four to five members. Instead of that, if uh, some 10 members board forcefully and definitely there are the chances that the brake may fail and other accidents may occur okay and uh, the defendant will attempt to prove who is the defendant manufacturer is the defendant the defendant will attempt to prove that the plaintiff plaintiff is the plaintiff in the sense uh, uh, the person who file, files the complaint who files the lawsuit okay the party who has who is claiming that our product is faulty is known as the plaintiff okay so that one i was uh, telling here um a defendant will attempt to prove that the plaintiff's bad judgment it is very true the defendant will at, will always attempt will always attempt to prove The plaintiff. I told you what we mean by plaintiff here. Okay, the plaintiff's bad judgment. 
plaintiff, like the customer, may become a plaintiff. Once they file a lawsuit, they will become a plaintiff. Okay, so the defendant can be defend in these ways. They can always say that the plaintiff's failure to maintain the product properly. Plaintiff's failure to maintain the product properly. Company can say, man, manufacturer can say, the person who is claiming that there is a fault in our product may not have maintained our product properly. That can be what, in that way he can, the manufacturer can defend, right? And other ways of defending, he can say that, um, uh, the possible accident may be due to the another reasons, right? Uh, that is uh, a plaintiff's improper use of the product. Plaintiff's improper use of product. It could also be one of the use I was telling you in the beginning. He may not use it properly the way the product supposed to be used. The product did not uh, like get used in that way. In that case, what happens? Uh, certainly, there will be damage. There will be accident. Chances are there. Uh, this is the second way in which the manufacturer can defend themselves, stating that plant is improper use of the product and. Uh, it is also possible that the accident was caused by an alteration or change in the product. Okay. Accident was caused by caused by an alteration. Alteration or change in the product. Change the product after it left the manufacturer after it left the manufacturer yes these are all the major way in which a manufacturer can defend themselves okay so you can always read the third one, which is very important. Uh, often cases we see that the consumer will tend to make the alterations or we tend to create certain changes in the product once it has been bought from a manufacturer. So the manufacturer can always claim that, can always defend that, stating that the consumer might have uh, altered the product or might have change the features of the product. In that way, a manufacturer can always defend, stating that it is the mistake of the uh, plaintiff. I just write, what is the meaning of the plaintiff? We should understand. I have been mentioning the plaintiff word here. Plaintiff is nothing but the one who One, the party, party who file, files lawsuits. Climbing manufacturer can defend themselves. Okay, and there are other uh, directions also. We can. It is a large topic being discussed. We are not discussing the uh, all the facets here. 